The new Sense Player by Hymns is not only a book player, but you can use it to record, read documents, download and listen to podcasts, listen to the radio, control your smartphone, and a lot more. Let's talk about it. Hi everyone, this is Carrie on Accessibility and I talk about accessibility and technology. I'm excited to talk about the Sense Player. It came out earlier this year and thank you to Hims for sending over the device so I can make some videos about it. I've already done an unboxing and a walkthrough video. The walkthrough video was pretty extensive and it went into a lot of detail of how everything was laid out and all the different menus. Whereas this video is more of a tour of the device and my experience using it. This video has been made possible by all the carry on accessibility Patreon members. Let's go over some device specifications. This information is straight from the HIMSS website. First, it has 64 gigs of internal memory and 43 gigabytes is available to the user. The rest of it is for the operating system. The micro SD card slot supports up to 256 gigs. It has dual band Wi-Fi and it can handle 2.5 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. It has Bluetooth 5.0 for audio and this is also how it does Smart Connect, which is the feature they use to connect to smart devices. And you can also use a Bluetooth keyboard. It has an FM radio, USB type C, it has haptic feedback, which I actually really like. It has a 1.5 watt built-in stereo speaker and it has a stereo condenser microphone. There's a four pole earphone jack. It's a combined headphone and uh, microphone jack. And you can also connect audio devices using the USB-C. The device is approximately 5.12 by 0.57 by 2.52 inches. It weighs in at approximately 0.31 pounds. And it has a user replaceable battery that's 3.8 volts and 2300 milliamps. There's actually two versions of this device. This one has OCR and it has a camera at the back, but there's also another version that has no camera at the back if you're not interested in its OCR functionality. Right now, it's running Android 11, which is a bit disappointing, especially since they mentioned they wanna put a screen reader on here and be able to use Android apps independently on the device. So here are some of the file types that it will support. TXT, RTF, HTML, HTM, XML, DOC, DOCX, PDF, EPUB, MP3, MP4, WAV or WAV, WMA, WMV, OGG or OG, ASF, AAC, AVI, FLAC, 3GP, MPG, M4A, DAISY text and audio, and more. Whew, that was a mouthful. So let's quickly go over the layout of the device. Most of the buttons are on the front face and you'll feel four buttons at the very top and the first button all the way to the left has a tactile marking. Right under that are your navigation buttons. Right in the middle is a circle button that has a bit of an indentation which makes it really easy to feel and to find. Around that circle uh, is an up arrow, a down arrow, left arrow, a right arrow, and then around those are four other buttons. So on the top left, this is going to be your home key. On the top right, this is going to be your menu key. Bottom left is back and bottom right is delete. The bottom section is your group of T9 buttons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, star, zero, and pound. On the right edge, you have the power button and below that is the lock slide switch. On the left edge, you have the record button and then you have what Hims calls the voice control button. And this button cycles you through volume and pitch and equalizer and different things depending on what app you're in. And below that are the volume keys. For example, if you keep pressing that voice control button and you go to pitch, you can then use the volume keys to adjust the pitch. Tech. Voice rate, five. voice pitch, five voice pitch six voice pitch seven right below the volume buttons on the left edge is the micro sd card slot on the bottom edge you have the headphone jack on the left and the usb c port on the right there's nothing at the top edge but on the back near the top edge is a place where you can put the lanyard on the back of this device there is a camera and a flash at the top and then the battery compartment right below it to power on the device you just press and hold that power button just like it takes your smartphone a little while to turn on it also takes the sense player a little while to turn on it is running on android one thing i like is when the device is on and you press that power button and give it a quick press the device will go to sleep it reminds me of how we can just press the lock button on our phone and 
turn off the screen and put the phone kind of to sleep and then when we press it again the screen turns on right away and so you can just leave your sense player on just like your phone in my walkthrough video i went over what all the buttons do so you can watch that video if you want a more comprehensive overview of all the buttons i will note that the top buttons are a two-step button so a little similar to a camera shutter button where you can do a shallow press and it clicks in place and then you can push it down further and it also clicks so it's like a two two step button i'm not sure how else to describe that and then they have different functionalities depending on if you do a short press a deep press or a long press the button all the way to the right on the top row is your smart connect button this allows you to connect to an android device an iphone or an ipad or a braille sense hims has a pretty good video of how to use the smart connect feature which they have lots of tutorials on their youtube channel and there's even a playlist for all the tutorials for the sense player I did try it and it worked really well on iPad and on iOS. I don't have a Braille Sense and on Android, it did not work with my Samsung phone, but it did work with my Pixel. I think some of the issues are key mapping issues where Samsung uh, just isn't the same as Pixel. Not all Android phones are equal, but it did pretty well on the Pixel as well as the iOS devices. You can go through different items on the screen. You can change your rotor. You can go through headings and controls and all of that. You can control media playback. And at least on Android, you have some shortcuts where if you press and hold the delete button and you press different numbers, it will bring up different apps. You can press so left and right to navigate to button. next or previous Double item. Double. Double. And then you Google can press folder, the OK button or the circle mail. button to select. Emails. You can Google have calendar, it read all or apps, control the rotor. You can choose to have the audio come through the iPhone speaker or the sense player speaker. There's a shortcut for notification center, control center, screen curtain. There's a lot of commands and you should be able to look them up in the user manual. There's also three types of navigation modes. Web browsing mode. Text input mode. So let's actually go through the main apps on the device. I'll go ahead and wake it up. So I'll press the home button. File manager. And the first thing on the list is file manager. I'm going to press down. Media player. There's media player. Daisy player. Daisy player. Document reader. Document reader. FM radio. FM radio. You do have to connect to some type of speaker or headphones in the headphone jack for the FM radio to work. OCR. Then we have OCR, web radio, web radio podcasts. podcasts. For web radio and podcasts, HIMS already put some suggestions on here and you can always add some more. Library services. For library services, it has Bookshare and, and Online Daisy, but right now it doesn't have Bard as of this recording, but they do plan to add this. Carrie from the future here, I just received word that by the end of July 2023, HIMS plans a major update, including Bard support and transitioning to Android 12, which will also come with Android app. So perhaps by the time you're watching this video, they've already added that. So if I press down arrow again, utilities. It has utilities and we'll look through utilities. Recordings. It has a re recording app. Color reader. Color reader. Memo. Memo. Calculator. Calculator. Wake up alarm. Wake up alarm. Stopwatch. Stopwatch. Countdown. Countdown. Sleep timer. And sleep timer. Format. And then this is where you can format. Backup restore. And backup. Upgrade sense player firmware. And then upgrade. Recordings. So now let me share some of my thoughts and my experience. First, the interface is pretty similar to the Blaze ET, which is what I used to have, it's also a little similar to the Bookport Plus. The interface is pretty easy to use. You press down arrow, up arrow, you can press uh, right to go into a menu or okay, or you can press left to go up a menu. It's pretty, pretty simple. I just really enjoy the haptic feedback. I think it has a pretty good vibration motor and it feels really nice. It's not super strong and it's not, it, it just feels really good. You can control it and you can turn that on or you can turn it off in the settings. I find it pretty easy to use, but it does have a lot of options. For example, when you're playing media, you can press up arrow or down arrow to cycle between if you want to rewind or fast forward by one track or five tracks or 10 tracks or, or five seconds or five, 30 seconds things like that. And there just seems to be a lot of options. And I think this is a great thing. And it's also 
not, not such a great thing when you're looking for something specific and you just have to press down arrow a lot of times. So I feel like it's not super efficient, but I also really like that it gives you a lot of options. Speaking of the blaze, one thing that really took me a while to figure out was how to find out what the time is and the battery percentage. I was like, I definitely don't need to go to settings every time. And so I finally did figure that out. On the blaze, you just press the big red button, which was the same as the power button, and it would tell you the time and all the information that you needed. On the sense player, which I kind of really like, is you press and hold the volume up, 08058 p.m. And that tells you the time. You can also change it so that it'll tell you the time and date if you want. And then if you press and hold the volume down, eight charged using AC power. It will tell you the battery percentage. And I think that's just just really nice. It kind of makes me think of Button Mapper on Android, which which is a really nice shortcut app that I use. I also really enjoyed the power button also being like a sleep and wake button. That was really nice. I don't feel like I have to turn it off. And speaking of power, that makes me think of battery. I love that it's still user replaceable. You could probably order a couple different batteries and make sure they're charged and then you can swap them out. The batteries seem to do pretty well. I didn't really have a lot to complain about on that front. One thing that I think could have been improved were these buttons. The T9 buttons are, they're okay at the bottom. Uh, they're pretty clicky buttons. That's nice. I can feel the dot on the five and then the okay button or the select button in the middle. This is circle and it's indented. That was really nice. However, these other buttons they just are pretty shallow and it's not always the easiest thing to feel them like ah what I do is I have to find the okay button and then find the button relative to that that way is easier for me than to like immediately find the button they just feel like shallow buttons and it would have been really nice if there were like more tactile like markings on them somehow um, something to distinguish the home and the menu and the delete in the back I kind of wish that I'm not sure that this is a huge pain point for me in particular but people who may have some neuropathy or uh, trouble with their hands might find this a bit challenging plus the buttons are a bit on the small side also these top buttons having these two-step buttons at the top might be a bit challenging for some people one thing I found a little challenging was using the t9 keyboard you have to use it to search for podcasts or title things or create memos and for me it is challenging I remember being able to type pretty quickly on you know t9 keyboards when I was in back in middle school and high school school but I've definitely lost skill in that area but thankfully you can connect it to a bluetooth keyboard or even a wired one the sense player not having bard support is a pretty big disappointment I use bard a lot I read a lot of books and if I were to buy this product I might wait for that support and again that update should be coming by the end of July the OCR and the color reader they they work um I will say they are not the best and so I'm looking forward to the screen reader that Hims mentioned that they want to put on the, the Sense player. And hopefully we can get Android apps and things like Google Lookout. And I think that would be pretty, pretty cool to have something like Google Lookout on the Sense player. I really wonder how they're going to handle Android apps. Will it be kind of like the blind shell catalog where they have to program it specifically to work on the sense player, which would mean they would only support and provide and let users use certain apps, kind of like the blind shell. What would be cool is if they could partner up with blind shell and then they could make some sort of standard. And that way, any company that makes like these tactile devices could tap into that and kind of have like a, a, a unified app store for, for AT devices. Now that would be really nice. Some people were not very happy with the combined headphone and mic jack. For me, I I don't really plug in mics and things like that. So for me, it doesn't really matter. And plus it has Bluetooth. The Bluetooth worked very well for me. I could connect it with my Bluetooth headphones and I had no problem. One thing I do want to mention is the audio is, is pretty decent. When I first started using the device, I thought it couldn't go very loud and I was kind of disappointed. But then I figured out that there's a main volume and then there's a voice volume and then there's a media volume. And if you turn all those up, they can go pretty loud. Overall, I think it's a pretty good device. And I think that 
people who want a dedicated tactile device would really enjoy it. Nothing beats real physical buttons. <laughs> and I think it's a pretty good upgrade from something like the Blaze ET or the Bookport Plus or any older book players. I think it's a pretty decent upgrade if you use the player a lot. And I also think it could be much simpler than a smartphone for some people. And just having those buttons, again, is something really important. So let's see what Hims does for the Sense Player in the near future, giving it Bard support and maybe putting a screen reader on it. I'm really excited to see what the Android experience will be like. And hopefully it will continue receiving support and updates over the next couple of years. Oh, I almost forgot price. The OCR version that has the camera and flash at the back is 795 US dollars and the version without the camera is 650. If you're interested in the device, links will be down in the description. So what do you think of the Sense Player? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to support this channel some more, you can also go to patreon.com slash carry on accessibility. That's it for now and I'll catch you in the next video. The new the new sense player by hymns is not <laughs> I don't know how to make this video. <laughs> Why am I even on YouTube?